Questions et commentaires, the Honourable Member for Regina Louvain. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I've had the honour of serving uh, with the member for Sault Ste. Marie on the uh, all-party uh, Steel Caucus. Uh, as I think we all understand in this House, the legislation we're debating today removes the moratorium w which would allow the government uh, to bring in safeguard measures. Uh, I'm wondering if he could provide some reassurance that the government's intention is actually to bring in those safeguards in order to uh, protect Canada's uh, steel industry and steel workers uh, from unfair competition from offshore steel often produced in violation of internationally recognized labour and environmental standards. Member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you very much, and I really appreciate the members' uh, contributions to the All-Party Steel Caucus. Uh, we've had a number of face-to-face -face meetings and many teleconferences uh, you know, over the past year as we've been updating on, on the various uh, actions that this government has been taking in relation to protecting steel workers. And, um, you know, part of what uh, the member was talking about, Mr. Speaker, was uh, about the environment. And we know that steel, Canadian steel, is better for the environment. This is something that the member has made a point of uh, at the All-Party Steel Caucus, because when you use Canadian steel uh, in our infrastructure, there's less of a carbon in, uh, footprint, and it's better, uh, you know, uh, fighting against climate change when we use Canadian steel in our own infrastructure uh, programs. To your, your, your question uh, through the speaker is, um, quite frankly, we were quick to act uh, in, in putting um, safeguards on seven particular products um, last year. Uh, the CITT came out with a ruling supporting two of them. Um, there are five left. What, in my opinion, this the legislation does is it creates and, and that's why it needs to be passed expeditiously, if there are surges that the CITT did not indicate were there, if they occur, it allows uh, the government to move expeditiously to uh, fortify and to stop any surge that uh, may or may not occur. So that's why it's critical. It's a tool in the toolbox that you have to have just in case. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I had the honour of serving on the All-Party Steel Caucus with the member for Hamilton Mountain, and I would just invite him to speak uh, to the role of the All-Party Steel Caucus in advocating for appropriate safeguards for our steel industry. Well, member for Hamilton Mountain, in 45 seconds or less, please. I'll try to do my best. Um, it, it's a very interesting committee um, that we have. That, um, we're listening from all all different views and all different regions uh, of, uh, of the members that are there, of what we know about the steel industry. Uh, I want to thank the, uh, the member because I know he's put some valuable information in there to help us out um, when they come out for the Western products. But it's, it's very, very important that we sit and listen to each other. And I thought we were doing very good work until the last year and a half until we didn't have any type of meeting at all, even though there was many, many requests to be done. It was just like we weren't a party no more, an all-party uh, caucus. It was just a, a government caucus. So that's my answer to you. Thank you. Resume.